Hey, boy. Been a week, so I haven't been getting up on these as much as I should, and it's, I watched this film a little while ago, and it just took me a while to get to recording it. Because this one's weird in that there's a lot to talk about, and really not as much as I would have expected to talk about, so weird mix. And uh, this one I'd never heard of before, until I recently saw it at the pawn shop. It caught my eye, particularly the cast, so I had to check it out. And that is 1990, no, sorry, 1988's Witchery. Now, that's an eye-catching cover, I will say that. So, okay, you got me on that one. Then add uh, David Hasselhoff and Linda Blair? Okay, now you got my attention. Not to mention, it was produced by Joe D'Amato, who's kind of uh, infamous for a particular type of movie. From his anthropophagus to Beyond the Darkness, he's got, he's got some... His movies stand out. Now... Okay. Now, Witchery. Also known as Witchcraft, or Witchcraft Evil Encounters. Also known as Ghost House 2. Also known as La Casa 4. Okay, so I'm not sure which of those titles really originated here, but most places listed as witchery, but the actual on-screen title listed it, this this copy anyway as witchcraft evil encounters. I know uh, overseas, particularly in uh, Great Britain, it's mostly known as Ghost House Two. Sort of an in-name only sequel to Ghost House also known as La Casa 3, before segueing into uh, La Beyond Darkness, La Casa 5. I haven't really tracked down much in terms of uh, the other ones for La Casa 3, such as The House. So, I'm not sure where it goes from there. That's kind of a rabbit hole. I don't want to go so far down. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go over the Plot. Now, for those sequels and whatnot, despite this being uh, also known as Ghost House 2, it doesn't really directly connect from what I can tell. So, it, it stands on its own. And this has to do with a witch house. A house in which there were witchery, and witchcraft, and witches. Some time before. Now, it's kind of ambiguous how long ago this was, but... There was a house, it's a little, on its own little island, and there once were witches. Now, uh, we have two sets of characters, and it will admit it took me a little bit longer than I'd like to figure out who is who here. Now, we have Gary and Linda, who are on the island, studying witches. Linda's writing a book, she's doing all the studying, and Gary's there as the photographer. Linda's played by Catherine Hickland, and Gary is our David Hasselhoff. Now, the Brooks family just are looking to buy the property, to maybe turn into like a country club. They're rich and a little pompous, particularly the uh, the mother in here. So, it's a family of four. Uh, the business-inclined father and the mother who seems to be bank or like determined to turn a profit here. Linda Blair plays uh, the daughter of those two who is pregnant with their own child. And then there's a much younger boy who he's there and starts seeing a woman in black all around, but even before they go to the Witch Isle. So, uh, the photographer and the researcher aren't supposed to be there, and when they get, then, uh, when the prospective buyers go out there and discover them there, they ain't happy, but a storm traps everybody there, 
including a real estate guy and uh, I believe they're I think she's like a planner for the uh, New Country Club. So, uh, they all get stuck on this island during a storm, and slowly but surely they start vanishing, seeming to be pulled into some alternate time or dimension where there be witches, and bad things happen to them. And it kind of is uh, trying to get off the island or attract attention while being preyed upon by the witches. Okay. So, how was this one? It's alright. That's really all I can say. I wanted to like this one more than I did. It is a slow burn. And I can deal with the slow burn, but this one was a bit too much of nothing and not enough of something. That said, when this movie does come alive, particularly in the witchy dimensions, there are some crazy visuals and some outlandish death scenes, and those were great. I could have used a lot more in that vein, but there's a lot in between those ones. Like, I'll give an example for the mother. So, she's, like, gets pulled in, and, and is uh, set upon by the witches who sew her mouth shut. Okay, that alone, the scene, was good. But it doesn't end there. Not only do they tie her up and uh, sew her mouth shut, but then they throw her back into the real world. Upside down in the chimney. And, well, she just there, eh, and she's stuck there. And then the family, who is stuck on the island in the storm, decides, hey, it's kind of cold, we should light a fire. So she's stuck in the chimney, being smoked out and slowly burned alive, unable to make enough noise to attract attention, being only about a foot away from help. That was an effective scene. But there's a lot of slowness to get there. I will say the effects on uh, the gore effects, there's not too many of them, but the ones that there are work beautifully. Uh, having Joe D'Amato's hands in this, I would have expected that. But it's really slow in between these. When those happen, they are great. But... Otherwise, some of the other effects are a little lackluster. They, the photographer and uh, his lady friend are in trying to investigate the witch light, which is a really cheesy animation effect, which kind of is what they're trying to capture. And um, the, the pictures, they, the animation scene they use for them being pulled into this witchy world is very dated. But I can forgive that. I don't mark it off for that. It's the pacing that I'm having problem with. Now, the acting is a mixed bag. Linda Blair is great. David Hasselhoff is great. Most of the other characters are fine. The kid is so wooden, it is amazing. I've seen bad child actors, but this kid is something else. And they're trying to do some creepy things with him being the one who talks with the woman in black, and he has this little recording machine, so he records, like, this demonic chant going, so they do some cool things with him, but the kid can't, doesn't have it in him. He's, like, five. So it's not really the kid's fault, but... Hmm. And the second one I was having a problem with is actually Captain Hicklin. Her line reads are just off. They see very... Dry, or it's like she's the first time, like they went with the first take on a lot of her stuff. So it seems like she just seems just out there, like she's spacing out or something. I don't know what it was, but there's just something about her delivery that just really wasn't doing it. Like she seems like half interested in like everything she's sa in what she's saying when she's supposed to be like obsessed with this research. And considering she's, like, one of the main characters, it's that's a problem. Now, I didn't dislike this movie, but I wanted to like it more than I did, because it had a lot going for it. There's a lot of names here that I like, and it's an interesting concept, but for me, for some reason, a lot of witch movies just kind of fall a little flat. 
I want to like them, but like. Suspiria, I recognize as a great film, but at the same time, I wanted to like it more than I actually did. This is another one that's kind of falling into the same problem. This one, I can still give it a three, but it's kind of at the lower end of three, because there is some stuff worth seeing here. I just wanted more of it, and a little bit less in between. Well, all on this one. Have a good night, and hope to see you soon. Take care.